Shaving with shoe cream. Well, somebody's probably cleaned their shoes with shaving cream. There ought to be a law against William. Thank you, Emily. Yes, Miss Ethel. Emily, nobody minds you tidying up, but why do you have to hide everything? There were three lipsticks on my table yesterday, and now I can't find one. I never touched them. Well, they can't disappear into thin air. Where are they? Would you like me to hazard a guess? If it gets me nearer my lipsticks, yes. Well, yesterday, William was big chief firewater, and Red Indians used war paint, and I shouldn't be surprised if it was red. Emily, you don't mean my three beautiful lipsticks. Mind you, it's only an hazard, miss. Emily! Yes, Mr. Blair? Who's covered the boot brush with shaving cream? I'm sure I can't think, sir. Place gets more like a madhouse every day. Next thing you know, someone will try to shave with shoe cream. Mr. Roberts already tried it. Has he? Has <laughs> Tell William to come down at once. He's out, sir. Out? He hasn't had breakfast yet. He said he'd be back for that. What's he doing out at this early hour? It's only... It's 8.30. Why isn't breakfast ready? It's ready now, sir. I've had a bit of trouble with the refrigerator. You know perfectly well that if I miss that fast train, I have to stop at all 17 stations to town. Now, why can't this place be run to a schedule? For 25 years, I've done my best to do my best with everybody in this house. And if my best isn't good enough, it's best for me to leave and do my best for someone else. All right, Emily, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I spoke harshly. But if you've ever stopped at all 17 stations to town, you'd understand why I want breakfast at 8 sharp. Yes, sir. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, ma'am. Everything all right? As all right as it ever will be in this house. Now, Emily, you know you love every minute of it. Well, if you say so, ma'am. The man's here to do the window and breakfast, ready. Good. We're a bit late this morning, aren't we, Emily? It's a fridge, ma'am. I couldn't get it open. The door's froze up solid. Why don't you turn it down a bit? But it won't turn down. Nonsense. There's a little knob at the side and you just twist it. But it won't twist. Not since William switched it on for. William? Whatever did he do that for? He had some idea of making an igloo out of ice cubes. <laughs> Never mind, Emily. He goes back to school next week. Supposing he gets measles. Measles? Who's got measles? That's all we need in this house, measles. No one's got them, dear. Emily was just hazarding. And turn your trousers down. Morning, Pop. Morning. I understand you shave with shoe cream. That's right. How are your shoes? Nicely lathered? <laughs> I shall need an explanation from someone on this. We're late 
this morning, aren't we, Emily? Thank you, Emily. Morning, Mother. Morning, dear. Cheer up, Pop. Don't call me Pop. Sorry, Father. What's this bill for repairing the geezer? And he bought the darn thing a month ago. It blew up, dear. Blew up? Couldn't possibly blow up. The man said he couldn't possibly blow up. William proved it could. Now, Ethel, don't be unkind. It wasn't really William's fault. It never is. Where is he? What's he doing out before breakfast? I won't have this place treated as an hotel. Eat your breakfast, Father. You know you don't like the slow train. Go and find William. Me? I have no breakfast yet. Doesn't anyone in this household do what I tell them? Do as your father says, dear. William's probably in the barn. All I can say is... Your breakfast, dear. Where's the bread knife? Oh. Emily, you've forgotten the bread knife. I haven't forgotten it. It's just disappeared. Dunson's bread knives don't just disappeared. Why not? Lipsticks do. Now, Ethel, that's a most misleading remark. William isn't responsible for everything that goes wrong in this house. No, that's not his fault. Do be sensible, Father. Now, what possible use could William have for a bread knife? And grasping the sword Excalibur by the hilt, King Arthur slowly drew it out of the solid rock. Well, what happened then? I'm just telling you. Well, go on then, hurry up. As he was the only one who could pull Excalibur out of the rock, they knew he was meant to be king. Then he started the Knights of the Round Table. All right, all right. I know. Whose book is it? Everyone knows about the Knights of the Round Table. They went around righting wrongs and rescuing girls. They brought succor to damsels in distress. Well, they did that too. It's the alarm! Action stations, men, an enemy approaches! What's the idea of trying to cut breakfast? I didn't try to cut it, but it was so late, half the day's gone before. Back. I could get it just as well at lunchtime. Perhaps Emily could put it in the fridge. You heard what I said, back. Don't get any time to do anything these days. All this double treble summertime or whatever it is, taking an hour from the beginning and sticking it on the end. I'll stick something on your end if you don't get moving. Morning, Mother. Morning, Ethel. Morning, Father. Good morning. May I say how much we appreciate the honor of your presence at the breakfast table? It was very naughty of you to go out there without eating something. Sorry, Mother, but it was just that breakfast was so late today. <coughs> What's the matter with Emily? Oh, never mind about Emily. Get on with your breakfast. I'd like to go through one whole day without having to shout at you once. Well, that's all right with me. Don't be cheeky. I wasn't being cheeky. Father said he'd like to go through a whole day. I heard what he said. Well, all I said was... Can't you even shut up at mealtimes? Well, Ethel said I was being cheeky. You don't think I was being cheeky, do you, Father? William, the effect on the nerves of the continued sound of your voice beggars description. I should take it as a personal favor if you kindly shut up. Yes, Father. The sooner you eat your breakfast, the sooner you can go out and play. Yes, Mother. Did you do your hair this morning? I did. I brushed it. Ha! Huh. You don't need a brush. You need a dog comb. Pass the toast, please, Ethel. And leave William alone for a while. Honestly, Mother, the way he goes about is disgraceful. I saw him in the village yesterday. He looked awful. His shoes were undone. His socks were coming down. He must have been using his garters again for catapults. Had you, William? Sugar, Ethel? William, your mother's talking to you. Sorry, Mother. What did you say? You know perfectly well what your mother said. Anyway, they're all right now. I've tied them up with string. William, did you or did you not use your garters as a catapult? Well, you see, I, I needed a catapult. Oh, that's too bad of you, William. That's the fourth pair I've made you in two weeks. It's this utility elastic. It breaks like cotton. I'll break you like cotton if I hear it. Well, suffer me. It's nine o'clock. Second train goes at 8.59. I know it does. Well, you've missed it. Of course I have. Then what are you hurrying for? Robert's right, dear. If you've missed it already, there's no need to hurry. 
All this comes from not running the place to a schedule. Whoop. There, you see, now I've got indigestion. John, dear, why don't you not go to the office today? It's Saturday, it's a half day. You won't be there till after 11 anyway. I'll phone up and say you've got a liver or something. And we'll have a round of golf this morning. Certainly not. You think I'd let you ring up and tell lies and... Besides, we haven't got any golf balls. I've got some more golf balls upstairs in my drawer. William, don't talk with your... Don't talk with your mouth full. For the sum of one penknife, a matchbox with two racing beetles, I now proclaim you a knight. Hey! Well, that's how they do it. What, on the nut? Yes, I've seen pictures. They turn the sword around and conk them on the head with a handle. Well, they don't have to conk it so hard. Look, if you want to be a knight, you've got to be conked. Put your head down. Arise, Sir Douglas. Hey! What do you mean, Sir Douglas? Only the king's allowed to knight people. I am the king. King Henry. Same as King Arthur, only different name. You are not. I am king. King William. And the rest of you can be knights. Well, why should you be king? Because it's my idea, my book, and my bread knife. And besides, I was the only one who could pull Excalibur out of the rock. But I could have done it if I had the chance. I never get a chance at anything. Whenever it's my turn to do something, someone says, let's do something else. The enemy! I bet it's Robert again! No, he's out playing golf today. <laughs> It's a girl. It isn't even a girl. It's Violet Elizabeth. <laughs> Go away, Violet Elizabeth. You're trespassing. But I want to play Indians, William. Well, you can't. We're knights of the round table today. And they didn't have women knights. I want to be a knight. I want to be a knight. Oh, dear. Come on. General meeting. No, I don't think so. No. How could you? It's been decided that you can be a damozel. I don't want to be a damn anything. I want to be a knight. Well, you can't be. All right, then I'll scream and I'll scream till I'm sick. I can too. All right, all right. Let her be a knight. I'm going to be a knight. I'm going to be a knight. Aren't women a curse? Sorry. What do you want to go and do a thing like that for? You might have broken the bike. Only a bit, my God. Nobody cares if I'm alive or not. Oh, what smashing boxing gloves. I might be sitting here in horrible agony. It's got four-wheel brakes, too. Shouldn't be surprised if I've got a broken neck. Nothing broken on here. That's the main thing. Leave that alone. Whose is it? Whose is it? It's mine. And they're mine, too. You won't half cough it when they find it's missing. I tell you, they're mine. My brother gave them to me. Your brother? Get away. No older brother gives his younger brother anything. Not unless he's dying and repenting. Is he dying? He's getting married. It's the same sort of thing. Then why has he given you these? Stuff he's turned out. He doesn't need a bike and a wife. Where's the wedding? Bet there'd be plenty to eat. They can't get married till they get a house. Seems there's a housing shortage or something. Seems as many as there always was. Yes, but there are more people. What cause is that? Don't know. This new government or something. Oh, what a beautiful bicycle. What's she doing here? I have a knight. What's a knight? Knight to the round table. This is the table. We'd better call it a square table. And they didn't sit on it either. We're going to do the same as they did. Go about writing wrongs. Oh, my father's got a lot of wrongs to write. Income tax and rates and things like that. We're not going to start trying to write those. It'd take months. They're not really wrongs anyway. They're only things they go on about at breakfast. If we write in those, they'd only go on about something else. Yes, we want wrongs like false knights and people being put into dungeons and things. I think that's silly. People aren't put in dungeons nowadays. Why don't you go away and play fairies or whatever girls play? They don't want to play fairies, they want to be a knight. I thought we weren't going to have anything more to do with girls. It's all very well saying that, but it's then that has to do with you. She was going to scream till she was sick. I can too. I can scream. Oh, scream. shut up. 
all right, and I start tell you something. What could you tell us? Start tell you. You told me to start up. Well, why don't you then? Silence, thou violet. Thought we were nice. You are nice. Now listen, knights. Not one word about us writing wrongs to Hubert Lane nor any of his gang. Swear by Excalibur. We, we swear. swear. We all know what Hubert Lane's like. He's a exaggerator. He'll go and tell his mother. She'll go fussing around our fathers, then exaggerate all over the place. I can still tell you something. Well, come on, what is it? I can see Hubert Lane. See Hubert Lane? She's balmy. I'm not either. He's looking in at the window. <laughs> I think we ought to talk to him. Nobody asked what you think. In all the stories I've read, they talk to them. Put his teeth out, William. I give you your last chance. Tell us your military secrets. You'll catch it, William Brown, if you touch me with that bread knife. It isn't a bread knife. It's Excalibur. It's a bread knife. And if you touch me with it, I'll tell on you. Pins in him. Can't you keep quiet? What were you doing spying on us? You shouldn't mind people looking. Unless you're doing something you shouldn't do. Pull his hair out, William. I'll pull your hair out in a minute. You do, and I'll scream, and I'll scream till I'm sick. She can, too. Oh, let him go. He's not worth questioning anyway. I could take Ginger's bite and catch him in no time. Oh, could you? And I'd catch you in no time. Well, I'd say, if a knight has to go out and capture somebody, he ought to be able to go on the bike. Whose bike is it? I'd like to know. If we're knights, we should be one for all and all for one. But not all for one bike. Listen, I've got it. Ginger's brother's getting married, so he doesn't need his bike anymore. So he gives it to Ginger. Well, when Robert gets married, he won't need his bike anymore. So he gives it to me. I didn't know he was getting married. Oh, he isn't yet. But I bet I can pretty soon fix it. Bet you can't. Bet I get Robert married in a week. I don't see how this is going to help us get bikes. Oh, you can never see anything. Can't you understand? We get your brother married too, then Henry's, then we'll all have bikes. Yes, but what's that got to do with being knights and righting wrongs? Listen. He's got a bike and we haven't. Well, that's not right, so it must be wrong. Therefore, that's the first one we've got to write. Right? Right! Right, now the next thing we've got to do is to get a sign up to show everybody who we are. <laughs>
Cow. Bet you don't have people telling you what to do all the time. Bet grown-up cows have more sense than grown-up people. It's in all the history books, too. Our form master even wrote it on the blackboard. But when I write it, it's wrong. Everything I do is wrong. Try to help people, and that's what happens. You know something, Daisy? Got a good mind next term to cross it out of every history book. Oh, shut up. I'm sick of arguing. We're jousting. Where's Ginger? On his bike. When are we going to get bikes? Listen, I got it all worked out. At lunchtime today, I'll find out what girl Robert likes, then I'll pick some flowers and take them to her from him. Who's your brother after? Don't know. It's a new one each week. Well, find out who it is this week and take her some flowers. You'll find out who Brian's soppy about and do the same. Right. It's the man with the rose again. Thinks just because he owns the manor house, he's bought the road too. Served him right if he killed us and got hung for it. It'd be more fun for him not to get hung, but if he'd killed us and we turned into ghosts and haunted him... Yes, I bet that'd be fun. Well, oh, I don't know. Ghosts can't eat. Then how do they live? They don't live. That's why they're ghosts. That's right. They put out their hand to take up a sweet and it sort of keeps on going through them. And they can't pick them up. Well, uh, let's not be ghosts then. That's all you think about, your stomach. down those stairs. Who, me? Did you jump off those banisters again? The fellow would have to be pretty clever to jump off those banisters. That big knob on the end. Never mind, sit down. You're late. And in future, I'm going to find you one penny every time you're late. It only costs Ginger to hit me. Well, don't answer back. Sorry, Father. But I had to wash my hands. You said always to wash my hands before a meal. What did you wash them with? Soot? They do look a bit grubby, darling. Well, I washed them. Must have a darker skin than most people's. It's a little thicker than most people's. Pass this to your mother. Are you using your bike this afternoon, Robert? Yes, I am. If I wasn't, I wouldn't let you and the dead-end kids get their hands on it. 
As a matter of fact, I was going to offer to clean it for you. <laughs> Thanks, you're getting no more money out of me. I pass this to Ethel. Money? Who said anything about money? I don't want any money. I was going to offer to clean it for nothing. Do you feel all right, William? Of course I'm all right. You've got to look after bikes, or before you know it, they rust up. Then they're no good to anyone. Well, what are you all looking at me like that for? I only offered to do something for someone. I'm always being told to think of others. Well, I'm thinking of Robert and how his bike might rust up if it's not cleaned. Well, it's a very nice thought, dear. I'm sure Robert would be pleased to let you clean his bicycle. Perhaps tomorrow. Eh, Robert? Yes, Mother, perhaps tomorrow. Oh, and uh, tomorrow Mrs. Lane has invited us all to tea. Oh, Mother, you didn't accept. I had to, dear. But it's Sunday, Mother. I know, Robert, but we must go. She's got it up specially so that we can all meet the new tenant of Honeysuckle Cottage. You mean Gabriel Gay? Oh, dear. She'd expect us all to ask for autographs. Nonsense, Ethel. She's probably quite a nice girl, even if she is in the film business. But I think Mother's right. I think we should meet her. After all, she's new in the neighborhood and must feel pretty strange. I don't notice the same interest in the new tenant at the manor. That's different. He's a flash time type and can look after himself. And I suppose Gabriel Gay can't. She's just a girl. And besides, she's on her own and must feel pretty lonely. I see. In other words, you've got your weekly heart attack. What are you smiling at, William? Who, me? Was I smiling? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I smile for hours and I don't know what I'm smiling about. I once heard of a man... All right, we don't want a lecture on it. Get on with your dinner. Yes, Pop. Father. Mm, that was pretty good. Can I have another helping, please? No, dear, you've had four already. I've never known a kid eat like that. He must have hollow legs. <laughs> well, can I have just one cherry, please? You were told no. Oh. Well, can I go then, please? Yes, and for goodness sake, get rid of some of that dark skin of yours before you have another meal. Yes, Father. Emily can clear, dear. Mother, can't we do something about William? Can't we send him to an orphanage or something? No, darling. You see, for one thing, he isn't an orphan. Robert. What are you doing here? Just sitting quietly. Well, if you're going to stay in here, just keep sitting quietly. How old are you, Robert? Twenty-one and shut up. Twenty-one? <whistles> well, what's the matter? Why shouldn't I be twenty-one? I didn't think you were quite as old as that. Seems to me most people are married by the time they're twenty-one. Oh, go away. Seems to me, if anyone's going to get married, they ought to be thinking about it when they get to 21. Will you shut up and let me concentrate? Seems to me, you ought to concentrate on getting married. You don't want to wait till you're old. Old people must look pretty silly getting married. Yes, I am. Sorry, Emily. One, X, two, X, X. It's you I'm thinking of, Robert. That Gabriel Gay's a beautiful girl, isn't she? I've seen her on the movies, and she's pretty, pretty. If I was grown up, say, 21, I'd want to marry her before I got so old she wouldn't want me. Not everyone gets a chance to marry a film star. I think if you sent her some flowers or something, she'd like that. William, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to wring your dirty little neck. Well, it was clean this morning. Nothing's touched it but the air. I can't help the air being dirty, can I? I'm going to finish this in the garden. If you come within ten yards of me, so help me, I'll crown you.
shall I say? William. William what? Just William. Oh, just William. Yes, sir. Will you wait here a moment, please? Well, go on. What'd she say then? I didn't hear the rest of the conversation. Oh, Maddie, you really are annoying. There's a suitor at the door who wants to see you. A what? A young gentleman wishes to talk to you about uh, getting married. Are you kidding? Oh, there's no kidding about this gentleman. He's even bought flowers. Well, who is he? Do I know him? Don't you think you'd better see him first? Oh, now, really, Kay, I can't go around seeing every Tom, Dick and Harry. Oh, but this isn't Tom, Dick or Harry. This is William. William who? Just William. I'll show him in. No, Kay, don't you dare. Kay! Kay, I'm naked. I'm undressed. Quick, get me my robe. Oh, dear. I'll fire that girl. I don't even know the man. Never even seen him. Well, don't stand there gaping. Go on, get out of it. Take the table. No, no, don't bother about the table. Just take yourself. Oh, dear. Coming here unannounced. Nobody's ready, nobody's dressed. No time to propose. In the middle of the afternoon. Miss Gay, this is Mr. Just William. Gay, these are from someone who loves you with the most devouring passion. Thank you very much. Someone who thinks you're the apple of his life and wants to marry you. Well, that's very sweet of you, William. Come and sit down. Now, I think you're a very sweet and attractive young man. And I'm very flattered you should want to marry me. Oh, I don't want to marry you. You don't? It isn't me I'm talking about. It's my brother, Robert. Your brother? Yes. He's too shy to tell you himself. Not your younger brother. Oh, no. He's 21. 21? Uh-huh. He's middle-aged. Middle-aged? Uh-huh. And he loves you better than any of those film stars who love you on the pictures. Only, he wants a bit of help from you. See? I see. But when you meet him, don't mention anything about this, because that would only make him more shyer. Oh, yes. That I can understand. And uh, don't mind if his manner to you seems different to what I've told you. No, no, of course not. Well, I think that's all. It's enough. Oh, and uh, he'd like to be married this week. Oh, he would. Uh-huh. But you've got to help him. You know how men are when they're soppy over someone. Uh-huh. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, do I have to congratulate you? You have to give me a good, stiff drink. Double. Uh-huh. Hello, Douglas. Miss Brown, these are from someone who loves you with a devouring passion. Why, Douglas, this is so sudden. Oh, no, not me. It's my brother. He says you're the apple of his life, only he's too shy to tell you himself. Who, Brian? Yes, and he wants to marry you. Miss Brown, these are from someone who loves you with a devouring passion. What, another? Yes, it's my brother John, and he thinks you're the apple of his life. And he's too shy to tell me. That's right. Now listen, 
I don't know what you two kids are up to, but I suppose as usual William's the mastermind behind it. Well, I just brought you some flowers. That's not being up to anything, is it? William took some to Gabriel Gay, and I brought some to you. Well, how was I to know your brother loved the same old girl as... Ow! Well, thank you anyway for bringing me the flowers. It was very nice of you, and I appreciate it. And because of that, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you both just ten seconds start, and if you're not out of sight by then... Hello? Brian? This is Ethel. I'm just checking up on something. If you had anything to say to me, you'd come right out and say it, wouldn't you? No, this isn't a new game. What I mean is, you're not the shy type, are you? Shy, dear. S-H-Y. Brian, you're being awfully stupid. S for sugar, H for Harry, Y for... Yo-yo? Yo-yo. Yo-yo. Look, let's forget the whole thing, Brian. It's getting far too complicated. Goodbye. Trouble in paradise? Yes, there's a serpent called William. <laughs> What's he been up to now? Your guess is as good as mine. He's been calling on Miss Gabriel Gay. What a boy. <laughs> calling on Gabriel Gay at his age. <laughs> Gabriel Gay! Oh, no! No! Oh, dear. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm awfully sorry to trouble you, but could I see Miss Gabriel Gay? What was it about? Well, I, I was just wondering if everything was all right. I beg your pardon? Perhaps I'd better explain. I, you see, I'm, I'm a father. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> what, what I mean is, I, I believe my young son was here this afternoon. And knowing my young son, well, I just wanted to know if everything was all right. Do you mean William? Yes, that's right. So you're William's father? Yes. Just a minute. There's a gentleman to see you. Not another. What's this one, in a pram? Oh, no, this one's grown up. He's, uh, related to William. He's a little worried about what the kid did. I think you ought to put his mind at rest. And I came down here for peace and quiet. I should have pitched a tent in Euston Station. Now I've gone lame. Get your shoe. Oh. Look, climb up a rope and disappear again, will you, or something? Mr. Brown. How do you do? Oh, I'm sorry, Sylvia. How do you do, Miss Gay? Good afternoon. I'm awfully sorry to intrude like this. Not at all. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. I, I, I won't stay a moment. I've just called to see if young William has been up to anything he shouldn't. On the contrary, he's a very sweet little boy. Will you have a drink? Oh, no, thank you. I never drink at this time of the afternoon. <laughs> oh, do. I hate drinking by myself. Well, thank you. Just a little one. You know, when I heard that William had come here, I, I was a little worried. Well, you don't have to worry anymore, Robert. <sighs> William and I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. As a matter of fact, you know, he was um, very flattering about you. Excuse me, did you just call me Robert? Yes, isn't that your name? Oh, good heavens, no. No, he's my other son. You're... You mean... You're their father? Yes.
sorry to trouble you. But is Mr. Brown here? Yes, did you want to see him? I'm Mrs. Brown. I wonder if you'd tell him that I'm waiting for him in the car. Well, of course, Mrs. Brown, but won't you come in? Thank you, no. Just tell him I'm waiting. Mary, what's the matter? Anything wrong? Nothing really, dear. We'll just put it down to spring. Spring? I'm afraid I don't get you, Mary. That's exactly what you do get, dear. You got me 24 years ago and you still get me now. I don't know what you're talking about. For heaven's sake, Mary, what's come over you? At the moment, it's whiskey fumes. Oh, that! Oh, that was poured out for me. I couldn't be rude, could I? Of course not, dear. After refusing afternoon drinks for 24 years, you couldn't very well refuse one from a painted, blonded, anatomic bombshell. Mary, I believe you're jealous. Jealous? Of what, dear? You thought, what's John doing down there with that glamorous Gabriel Gay? John, dear, don't let's play act. I'm your wife. Remember? And what exactly do you mean by that remark? I mean that I trust you implicitly, dear. Oh, you do, do you? Well, you've no right to. That's the most insulting thing to... Shh! The Joneses. It's about the stupidest head I ever saw. Ah, I heard that William had called on Miss Gay, and I, I thought I'd better go along see if he caused any mischief. I was a bit harsh about her. Yeah, she's really quite a nice person. I'm sure she is. Ah. She's a rotten actress, anyway. It's all your fault. All my fault? I was doing all right, then you come along and mess everything up. They can't both marry her. It's not allowed. It's bigotry. Oh, shut up, Fadine. It's all right for you. This means one of us isn't going to get a bike. And I'll know who that'll be. It's always the same. Always the moment someone's got to suffer for something, it's me. The trouble is, we're trying to get too many people married at once. We ought to concentrate on Robert. And I still say Robert can't get married till he gets a house. Well, he's going to get one. What with all this housing shortage? If all the houses are full, we've got to empty one. How to empty a house? Get someone to leave. But how? Listen, why does someone leave a house? Because they don't like it. And why don't they like it? Because the roof leaks. And why else don't they like it? Because it's haunted. Exactly. Well, all this is going to happen to this house. Which house? What's the biggest house here? The manor. Right. And who bought the manor three weeks ago? The man with the rolls. Right. And who's given orders we're not allowed to fish in his tiddler pool? The man with the rolls. Right. And who's our sworn enemy? The, the man, man with, with the, the rolls. rolls. Right. You get out of here. I find you kids on these grounds, I'll have the police on you. No kidding. Get out of it! Who are they? Kids from the village. They're always trying to get at that pond round the back. They can be dangerous. If I catch them, I'll tan their hides. We don't want scenes, just keep them out. Yes, boss. Fancy shouting and carrying on like that. Yes, and that's just for doing nothing. Bet that chauffeur goes through it. I'm glad we chose him to haunt. Seems quite a big house to haunt. That's just the kind of house that gets haunted. Whenever you read about it in books... It's always this kind of a house. If anyone prowls, hit him first and ask if he's a ghost after. No kidding? No kidding. I get the willies every time I come in this place. You get them every time you go in any place. So big and so old. Here's a willy chaser, but don't go chasing any more this way. You want to be on your toes tonight. I'll be all right. I'll sleep with all the lights on. You won't tonight. <coughs> sleep in the dark? You're a big boy now. The less attention this place gets, the better. But, boss! Lights blazing all night attract inquisitive moths. And they won't go to bed at all. No kidding. You go to bed when everything's here. Not much rest for any of us for the next 48 hours. Everything should be here by 10.30. I'll be in with the pickup convoy at 12.30. Better set an alarm for that time. Don't use the phone company. They keep records. You know, men have got a George Cross for less than sleeping here with the lights out. No kidding. You'll get 10 years if you botch tonight. And that's no kidding either. That was 
the chauffeur. That means he's up there alone tonight. And it'll be a pleasure to haunt him. What are you looking so miserable about? Why my brother has to get slushy about the same old girl his brother gets slushy about. Oh, shut up. Always moaning. I remember a book at school where two people loved the same girl. Somebody called uh, Shakespeare wrote it. Well, couldn't we write to him and find out? Write to him? He's dead. Fancy you not knowing Shakespeare's dead. Well, how was I to know? I can't know everyone's name who's dead, can I? I bet there's a lot of dead folks' names you don't know. I bet I know more dead folks' names than you. Say, there's a dead one over there. Where? Over there, by the lake. He's not dead. But he is. They don't just allow people to die on the side of the road like that. Perhaps it's Shakespeare. We'll soon find out if he's dead or not. Young gents, where are you going to with that fine pair of boxy drugs? Oh, nowhere. We've just been looking at the house. Oh, going to buy one, eh? No, haunted. Haunted? <laughs> There's nothing I like better than haunting houses. Have you really haunted houses? That's one of the first things you learn in my profession. Chapter one, how to haunt a house. What's the best way to start at it? Oh, that's one of our most secret tricks. Can anybody be one? Be one what? A tramp. Oh, a tramp's an ugly word, my boy. We call ourselves Knights of the Road. We're knights, too. Knights of the Square Table. We write wrong. Do you write wrongs? Certainly do. If a man has too many rabbits in his field or chickens in his yard and I've got none, why, that's a wrong, isn't it? Certainly is. I try to put that right. Gosh, what a wonderful life. Certainly is. You can do just what you like, can't you? Climb trees, have fights, and get dirty. Certainly can. And people aren't always making you wash and brush your hair. Certainly aren't. Well, well, how do you get in? How can you be one? Well, that's not easy. It isn't generally known, but this is as difficult a profession to get into as many others. But if we were in, we'd know how to haunt a house and everything. Certainly would. But this is a profession where you have to uh, pay your way. You see, a sort of entrance fee. So to speak. Entrance fee? I'm the head of the whole tramp profession. You're lucky to have met me, because no one can get in except through me, see? Yes, but if it costs money... Uh, when you're one of us, we tell you the best places for sleeping and getting your meals. And the people who give you food and the people who won't. And we tell you the best woods you can poach in safely and the woods that you can't. And how to haunt houses. How much is the entrance fee? Two bob. Two bob? Ah, yes, but when you haunt houses our way, they stay haunted. We pass all our secrets on to you, and you give us a small fee in return. Uh, that's fair, isn't it? But we haven't got two bob now. Oh, you haven't? Oh, well, look, I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I've taken a liking to you, young gents. I'm going to give you uh, another chance. Thank you. I'll be back here tomorrow at the same time. You'll be able to get the two bob then, won't you? We've got to get it. Good. Now, there's one condition. No one must know what you want the money for. Of course not. Of course, mind you, it should be two and six. I'm letting you off cheap because I like you and I think you'll be a credit to us. Good day. Fancy that happening to us. I'd like to be just like him. What a haunt old Tonks has got coming to him. If we ever get two Bob. There you go, moaning again. We've got to get two Bob. Hello, Mother. Cap off in the house, William. I wish you weren't so hard on your socks, dear. Couldn't you try and walk more lightly? Uh-huh. Mother, can I have some money, please? No, dear, your pocket money's been stopped to pay for the window and the geezer. But this is something to do with my future. It's for a reason that's going to save you a lot of money. 
I've got a career. We should stand out of the light, William. I'm sure Robert never made holes this size. Why must you walk so heavily? I've got a heavier brain than Robert. Naturally, a brain like mine goes through a bit of old wool. Run along, dear. There's a good boy. How much money would you have to spend on me being a doctor, if I wanted to be one? You'll have to work much harder at school and be a lot cleaner and tidier if you want to be a doctor. Oh, I don't want to be a doctor, but how much would it cost? Oh, several hundred pounds, I suppose. Well, you needn't spend all that money on making me a doctor, if you give me two shillings now. Two shillings? Well, you said yourself it'd cost more to make me a doctor. No one was going to make you a doctor, dear. Well, I have to be something, haven't I? I mean, whatever I am, you'll have to pay money to make me it, won't you? I suppose so. Well, I'm going to save you all that money for just two shillings now. William, dear, you're talking utter nonsense. Run along and have your tea in the garden. Seems funny to me for a mother not wanting to pay two shillings to get a son into a career. William, dear, you're in my light. <sighs> well, I didn't have any luck either. Even ask them to knock it off whatever they're going to buy me at Christmas. Me too. They went on about the money they spend on my clothes and food and school fees. As if food was our fault. We've got to eat. I even have to stay away from school all next term to save them money. They're pretty difficult people to understand, grown-ups. Look at Robert. Squanders all his money on stupid things like clothes and books and notepaper and things. Be all right if a few people wanted a few shilling wrongs righted. No one will ever pay a shilling. I always said so. I bet there aren't many people with more than fourpence. Now we'll never know all the secrets. How to haunt a house and everything. All right, then we'll have our own secrets. Bet I can haunt a house better than any old tramp. I bet you're not so clever as you think you are. How do you know how clever I think I am? You must think yourself pretty clever if you think you know how clever I think I am. All right, then. How do we haunt a house? I'll tell you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight at the sand pits just after midnight. Midnight? We'll all be in bed. Well, we can get out of bed, can't we? Unless we're sleeping in cement or something. You bring a sheet, a torch and a bucket, a sheet and a rattle, and another sheet. And from now until bedtime, I think we ought to put in some practice on our moaning and groaning. Ready? <laughs> What's going on out here? What was that infernal racket? I don't know. I was suddenly woken with a crash. Well, what made it? What made it? You mean who made it? William! 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 Why, Father! Being awake. Were you making that confounded row, kicking things up and down the passage? Kicking things up and down the passage? Were you on the landing just now? I don't know, Father. You don't know? Well, you see, some people walk in their sleep, and when they wake up, they don't know where they've been. You know, I once heard of... Be quiet! Yes, Father. 
What's wrong, dear? Wrong? He plays football in the passage in the middle of the night? I wasn't playing football, Father. You know, John, a house is always full of funny noises at night. Creaking laundry baskets. Baskets. Well, I don't believe there's the slightest atom of doubt that you were in the passage. But I'll give you the benefit of it all the same. Thank you, Father. Mary, I've made up my mind. What about, dear? I won't have that boy in the house another day. I'm going to send him to sea, to the colonies, to an approved school. You're going to do nothing of the sort, John. My dear, it's the only way I can't control him, and you certainly can't. He's a boy, dear. It's just natural high spirits. Well, when natural high spirits run to playing football in the passage, in the middle of the night, it's time they were curbed. Didn't you ever do that sort of thing when you were a boy? Certainly not. Oh, no. I seem to remember you climbed the Dean's statue and placed a receptacle on his head. Yeah, I remember. No, no, that's different. I bet he wanted to send you to sea, to the colonies, to an approved school. All right, all right. But remember, you're responsible for bringing up our family. And we've got a pretty nice family at that. One day they're all going to get married and leave us. And we shall be here on our own. And you will be the first one to say, suffer me, what wouldn't I give for a bit of noise about the house? You win. In the morning, I'll go to William and apologize for doubting him. There's a good point. All right. Now you know the plans for Operation Horn. And remember, not a sound from anyone till I give the signal. Right? Right, right. And if any of us get into difficulties, give the deadly peril whistle.
now. <coughs> yes, you can leave them on. <coughs> you and your sneezing, you nearly ruined everything. I can't help it if I sneeze, can I? I bet if there was something to stop people from sneezing, they would have invented it years ago. <coughs> Gosh, morphers. He must be awfully rich. There's hundreds of them. Perhaps he's way extravagant. Hey, I've got an idea. Why not send one of these to Gabriel Gay from Robert? What, a fur? Yes. All women like furs, especially minks. My father always says a mink helps a woman after she's 40. But how can you tell which is a mink? By the smell. They smell awful. That skunk. Listen. It's a car. Quick, light. It's the chauffeur. Come on upstairs. Gaffer, I'm all glad to see you. You're late. Late? Marvellous, ain't it? We very nearly didn't come at all. What with all the lights flashing on and off. We could see them a mile off. I saw them too. Oh, we thought it might have been a signal like. It was Tonks. Tonks? What's he got a touch of the abdebs? He'll be stretched out somewhere in the garden. What, dead? Dead drunk. Come on, get this stuff out of here. All right, Gaffer. Come on, you geezers. Get this lot moving. Come on, see you all night, Mr. Mabar. You and Johnny take this one. Yeah, Harry said to tell you, with the channel as it is, this consignment should reach the Belgian coast around dawn. Good. How many furs we got? 400. They're expecting 500, but the other job had to be abandoned. Should fetch a tidy bit of brass. That's right. Get this lot move in. The sooner we're out of here, the better. This place gives me the creeps. Here, pile all the loose ones over here. All right, I've got some gear here, eh? Burson, lamb, ocelot, squirrel. That's what they call a motley assortment, ain't it? Gesundheit. Better get this club sorted out. Get it in some sort of order. Well, that's only the armor. Leave it alone. Everything's falling apart in this house. Get the stuff out of the cellar first. Tell Johnny to stick my car in the garage. I'll ride with you. Thank you. 
Gentlemen, after all you've done for us, I think the least we can do for you is to send you home in a police car. Oh, we'll be all right, sir. We can get home. Most of the kids I know would give their mum's pocket money for a ride in a police car. Well, you see, sir, we're supposed to be in bed. It's bad enough as it is. But if we arrive back in a police car... Oh, I see. And as it is, there's just a sporting chance that you haven't been missed, eh? That's right, sir. Uh-huh. Suppose I drive the police car myself, turn off all the lights, and then proceed to your homes, and drop you off at the corner under cover of darkness. Gosh, would you? That'd be something. In that case, we accept. Knights of the square table, I salute you. You've righted a big wrong. It's all right, officer. I knew my way perfectly. Good evening. Another vagrant, Sarge. Good evening, Sergeant. Hello, boys. Oh, this is a place you can eat and sleep for nothing. And, of course, once the mobiles got moving, it was just a matter of time before we got both lorries. So I wouldn't be too hard on him. He's quite a community hero. Well, good night. Good night, Sergeant. That goes for me, too. Maybe this time I'll get some sleep. Good night, hero. Good night. And if you ring that gong, Emily, before ten o'clock, I'll scream the roof off. Father, but you see... I'm not interested in your excuses. I'll talk to you in the morning. Now, go off to bed. Could I have a glass of water, please? I'm thirsty. No. Could I have a piece of cake, then? I'm hungry. Will you do as you're told? Well, could Jumbo sleep with me tonight? Young man, I'll give you two minutes to get to your room. Shouldn't be surprised if one day they didn't put a statue up to us. Go to bed. Mary, I've made up my mind about William. No, I won't smile. Put up a statue indeed. If they did put up a statue, I wouldn't be surprised if someone climbed up and put a receptacle on its head. I... You're worse than William. <laughs> the fine thing, having parents like that. Just because I'm a hero, it's wrong. Where is Dennis Compton or somebody did it? His parents wouldn't moan and groan about it. Come in. Jumbo!
next Saturday at 10.30, there's at least two bobs worth of adventure when our community hero gets to visit the circus. Thank <laughs> you.